So in this video, I'm going to show you how I took a test scene from my screenplay that I shot with some friends a few years ago. And I am going to take it from this to this using Lensgo's video repainting tools. Now, Lensgo have been very kind and have sponsored this video. And that means that they have given me a huge amount of access to their tool, which has been brilliant fun because I've been able to try things that I wouldn't normally risk trying. But today we're going to look specifically at two very important features of their AI tool, which is model training and style transfer. Now, one other thing to mention, I'm not going to be dealing with lip sync or with audio in this particular video. I am a big fan of video repainting or video to AI video. And let me tell you why. There are currently three types of AI video on the market. One is text to video. Second is image to video. The third, and this is my favorite, is where you have a video input and the AI essentially paints over the top of that video. And the reason I love that is that you can direct human actors you get a much more authentic human performance. Now, none of the AI tools are ready to let me make my movie yet. But that said, it's still exciting. There's still a lot you can do. Before I go any further, let me just tell you a bit of the backstory of the scene that I'm working with. It features a young woman called Daisy who has telepathic abilities that are derived from a magical pink gemstone that she wears on a necklace around her neck. She used to be a ray of sunshine until she just spent too much time inside the heads of Dodge people and she's just gone completely dark. So she now is making a tidy living blackmailing rich businessman. And in this scene, we see her just approaching a businessman, finding the next target along with her accomplice, who is another woman with magical powers. And they're about to fleece this guy for all he's worth. He thinks that he's about to get lucky with this girl, but she's about to really rinse him for, <laughs> for all he's worth. So that's what this scene is. In actual fact, it's just the really interesting part of the scene hasn't even happened. This is just filler. This is just backstory. So the actual story is way more exciting than this scene. But just to let you know what's going on, that's it. So let's talk first about model training. In this scene, the principal characters are Daisy and a guy called Jack the Beanstalker. We'll call him, he's just Jack. And there is also a location. Now these are the three major variables that we're looking at. And we're going to create two different models, one for Daisy and one for Jack, and also a, a generic shot um, for the scene and the background. The style transfer function is great for copying across lighting and colors and general feel and style of the video. And that's what gives you a, a tremendous fluidity of style. Now in Lens Ghost tool at the moment, you can only use one model in each video or style transfer. So we're, I'm going to show you what those three look like. So first to make a model, what you need to do is start out with a bunch of reference images. 20, 30 is great. You can use up to 100 images for training your AI model. I started out with some mid-journey images that I already had, but equally you can use, well, Lensgo. <laughs> you can use Lensgo's image creation because they've just got access to Flux. If you don't know what Flux is, it's a great background engine that is much better at prompt recognition and giving you more accurate results. I've also had some initial tests that have showed it's really good with emotions too. So I had great fun using Flux with Lensgo. There is a downside though, which is that if you create a model using Flux, you can't use that flux created model for video to video. You can only use that model for creating stills or for creating image to video video. So basically create your reference shots using flux and then import them. And then from there, you'll have to use the standard model from that point onwards. So there are some key features for the images that I used. I wanted Daisy's hair to be consistent. So she's brunette with blonde highlights. I wanted her to have the same look. <laughs> My hack for that is to have two celebrities to name. So I named uh, two well-known female celebrities in my uh, prompt each time I created them and blended them together. So it was mm, blended with mm, and that gave me a fairly consistent look. The other thing I did was to prompt in the original images for the gemstone necklace. And I prompted for a strapless black cocktail dress. The reason I did that is that I found it's much easier if you have black strapless 
cocktail dress, then trying to define and describe all the details of the dress. So I wanted the costume, I wanted the hair, I wanted the jewellery, I wanted the face. Um, I also wanted the pose to be just right because sometimes I want to use these images for image to video creation and let me tell you why this matters. I prompted for the character to be looking away from the viewer. That means looking over here. This is because in film and television, characters don't look down the barrel of the lens, except for rare occasions like Deadpool. And it's so rare because it's called breaking the fourth wall. And often if an actor glances at the camera in a take, it ruins the shot. So <laughs> they've got to redo it. So one of the dead giveaways for AI is when the characters are looking straight at the lens. It happens in adverts, sure. It happens in modeling, sure. Um, but it doesn't happen in film and television. Because when you're telling a story, the characters are either running away from something or running towards something. They're either chasing away from their fears or they're chasing towards the, their hopes, dreams and aspirations. So in any given scene or any given shot, the character's attention should be on the thing that they are either afraid of or wanting or the, the thing that's got their attention. It's not you. You're the audience. So they never look at the camera. They're always looking away. Now, I found that AI is really hard to control gaze in characters. At the very least, I wanted them looking somewhere else. So I created all my reference images, almost all of them looking away from the viewer. And that's what I typed in the prompt, by the way, looking away from the viewer or looking away. If you feature that, play around with that, that often gets you the results that you're looking for, especially in Flux. Flux is really good for that. Anyway, so my character here, Daisy, she's got the dress, she's got the hair, she's got the jewellery, she's got the face, and she is looking away from the camera, so she's got the right angle. And I'll have lots of different versions of that as long as she's not looking at the camera. So once you've got your reference images, it's really easy to go into the tool and you just click here to upload the images, you give the character a name, choose original model and not flux when you're actually creating your model because at the moment you can't use flux created models for video to video, but just use original. It still looks great. As long as the original images are looking solid, that's good. Jack, by the way, I gave him glasses because I had glasses in the scene. So that was the two models trained. The, but I also needed an image for my style reference version of this video. Now, this is where you get to get the lighting that you're looking for and the colors. Those are the two big things, as well as a kind of a feel of the location and the background. If you've got a nice uh, image of the background, then that helps as well. I set this scene in a modern skyscraper wine bar in central London at nighttime. And so that's what's prompted in a lot of this. And so I created a prompt where I had a similar looking character to Daisy and a similar looking character to Jack. And they were in the kind of wine bar environment. I wanted a kind of warm orange and teal kind of a look. Orange and teal is a box standard cinematic color that uh, color scheme that's used all the time. Orange is skin tone and blue is the opposite end on the color wheel. And it just feels pleasing. It just works. The other thing that I really wanted was cinematic lighting. Now, the term cinematic gets thrown around a lot on YouTube <clears throat> by well-meaning people who don't really know what it means. And in fairness, there isn't really a definition, but cinematic lighting let me give you what is the most obvious um, version of cinematic lighting. Uh, it's sometimes called short lighting or it's often called short lighting and it's a three point lighting system. And once you if you've never seen this, if you didn't know about this, go look next time you watch a movie or a high end TV show. And once you see this, you will never unsee it. So cinematic lighting or short lighting is basically where you're shooting into the shadow side of the face. So imagine, here's me looking away from the fourth wall, okay? And what you have is a slightly brighter, over here is the key light, that's the brightest light. Over here on the side of the camera is a, a fill light that is not as bright. So uh, you have basically, this side of my face is it's slightly in shadow. Often there'll be another light somewhere behind to, uh, that's often called a hair light um, and that will kind of highlight my shoulder and my hair separates the character from the background if they need a little more separation. Once you see it, you'll never unsee it. I wanted that kind of lighting in my project 
And so I thought if I use a style reference that has uh, short lighting with the shadow side, then maybe it will apply that to my whole video. This is the shot that I came up with and you'll, you'll notice that the character of Daisy here, if you look to the this side of her face, um, the broad side of her face, the face that side that's mostly towards you, that's in shadow and it's brighter behind. So I picked an image that had the right color scheme and had the right lighting setup and I hoped that that would get applied. So having said that, two models, Daisy and Jack and my style all set up. This is what it all looked like. Got one. I see him. Same drill as usual. You hook him and soften him up and I'll step in for the kill. Why don't we go and find a quiet corner to go and talk? Now listen sweetheart, before we get started, let's discuss the ground rules. First, so I think you should let me do the talking. I know all about the oil pipe deal with the Russians and how you double cross them with the Syrians. I know about the deal with the Chinese that the Syrians don't know about. I know exactly where you keep the documents and I even know the combination number to the safe. What do you want? The top number is the amount and the bottom number is the bank to transfer the money to. You have one hour and if you need two hours then double the money. This is outrageous. You'll never get away with this. I already do, sweetheart. I go through men like you three times a week and I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm gonna have you hunted down and I'm gonna have you strung from ear to ear. So there were upsides and downsides to each one of the options. When I shot this, I wanted a deliberately engaging one shot to introduce Daisy. And so this is why there's that shot starting off with her shoe, up her leg, to her knee, to the glass, to the table, to the earpiece that she then puts in her ear and then you reveal the face and I wanted that kind of character reveal with little bits of information. Now cinematically I'm, I'm really happy with the idea of that shot um, but pff, my goodness you can see what chaos it is for um, AI to get its head around. It was, it was just all over the place. There were also little tiny shots like when she slid the paper across. The AI lost that, had no idea what to do. So there was chaos everywhere, but there's such promise with this. So lots of it did work well, but I needed to have another go. So I decided to have another go, and there are four things that I changed. The first thing that I did was to change the backgrounds of my reference characters. So I readed Daisy and I readed Jack, but instead of a dark, plain background, I gave them the kind of, I gave them, I described the bar and the color scheme and the short lighting, the cinematic lighting that I wanted. And so that meant that I was able to get reference images that would essentially blend the style with my model. So that was me, you know, I said you can have a model or a model or a style. I blended the style into my two models and I was like, oh, okay, great, that's 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 going to help. The next thing I did was I chopped up my scene into all of the shots that were just the daisy angle where she was dominant in the scene and all the shots that were Jack's angle, all, well, all of me in the scene and the cutaway shots. And I thought, right, let's try dealing with them separately. So I then ran those through and I applied the Daisy model to just Daisy's angles. And I applied the Jack model to just Jack's angles. And with that, I hoped I'd get better consistency with both characters. And with the cutaway shots, with dedicated cutaway shots, I tried different versions with different models and different style references just to see if I could get some that worked well. And the fourth thing that I did was I reduced the style strength down to normal in hopes that the AI would have an easier time getting its head around what I was doing. That means that you've got a better balance between the original underlying image and the AI repainting. So once I'd done that, I imported all of those into Final Cut Pro. I chopped them back up again 
and put them back together the way that they originally were with the filler shots and this is what I came up with. Got one. I see him. Same drill as usual. You hook him and soften him up. And I'll step in for the kill. Why don't we go and find a quiet corner to go and talk? Now listen, sweetheart. Before we get started, let's discuss the ground rules. First, so you... I think you should let me do the talking. I know all about the oil pipe deal with the Russians and how you double cross them with the Syrians. I know about the deal with the Chinese that the Syrians don't know about. I know exactly where you keep the documents and I even know the combination number to the safe. What do you want? The top number is the amount and the bottom number is the bank to transfer the money to. You have one hour, and if you need two hours, then double the money. This is outrageous. You'll never get away with this. I already do, sweetheart. I go through men like you three times a week, and I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm going to have you hunted down, and I'm going to have you strung from ear to ear. Now, it's still not perfect, but there were some real upsides. You'll notice whenever I tried to use cinematic lighting, one of the problems is that the AI doesn't know which side is supposed to be the shadow side if the character is moving his or her face. So that was one of the problems is it did manage to give me my cinematic short lighting where the shadow side of the face was um, was dominant. But what that meant was that when, <laughs> when the character turned the dominant side of the face, then the AI would just kind of repaint it and relight it. Uh, so there's it, great work, but it's not. There's still some work to do on the tool. That would be great for the next version if uh, you could have light direction. That would be very cool. So Lensgo's prices are pretty good. That's a great reason to use them because they're much more beginner friendly. You've got a free version, but the starter version for a few dollars a month is brilliant and gives you enough access to be able to play around with. But if you want to really have fun and really get going, uh, one of the pro or mega options is ideal. So with that in mind, here's a bit of good news. Uh, Lensgo have agreed to give three lucky viewers <laughs> a one month pro plan access to their tool, which I'm telling you will let you get a huge amount done. Uh, so all you need to do is just comment below, tell me what your project is and the first three people with decent projects that sound like you really do need to have uh, free access to the pro plan for a month, then I'll, we will email your details off to them and they'll just upgrade your account and you'll suddenly find a mega amount of credits in there. It's so much fun playing with. All in all, I'm really pleased with where it's going to. Of course it's not perfect. Of course it's not production ready. Of course you wouldn't ship this off to Netflix and say I've got a movie to show you. No, but that's not the point. At this point, the idea is that all of us as storytellers and filmmakers and screenwriters begin using these tools so that we get used to them. And when these tools do reach the point where they're looking more and more production ready, we are already up to speed. AI is coming whether you like it or not. It's like a tsunami that's coming and you can either sit on the beach and get wiped out or pick up a surfboard and learn to surf. And that's what I'm trying to do here.